Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dan with Forged Edge. And here I like to try all things knife related, things I've never tried before or things I'd like to improve on. Today, I'm going to be forging a tomahawk from a ball peen hammer. The first thing I've got to do is get the wedge out of the ball peen hammer. You can see I just cracked the, the handle trying to get that wedge out. So I'm going to try something different. I'm going to heat up the handle, or actually I'm going to set the handle on fire and, and hopefully I'll just be able to dump the ash out. It's starting to work, I was able to get the hammerhead off, it's still not hot enough so I'll put it back in the forge to get it nice and crispy. I should be able to just dump the rest out. That worked perfectly. It all came out nice and easy. Next thing I need to do is get the eye of the tomahawk a lot bigger than it is. Because right now I can't even fit my tongs through the center. And if I just hold on to the hammer on the side, it's gonna flip out, I won't be able to hold it with my tongs very well. I also need the eye bigger so it'll be able to fit over a handle. I don't wanna have anything that's too small. It'll look funny and then you can also break. So I'm using different things, use the railroad spike, uh, the pipe wrench jaws, and then right now I'm using the, the large rasp just to get it bigger. Usually you'd have a drift pin I don't have any of those. And I think for my next tomahawk or axe I end up making, I'm gonna order a drift pin. It'll be a lot easier and more the shape that I want for the eye. Right now I'm hammering in the blade of the tomahawk. And I switch between using the face of the hammer and the cross peen part of the hammer. The cross peen helps me get the length and the width out of it. And it, it'll do that faster than if I just use the face of the hammer. And I switch between hitting it flat and then I'll rotate it up. And when I rotate it up, this will give me more length. And then it'll make it thicker in spots and so I'll have to re-flatten that. And I just keep doing that process over and over until I have the shape that I'm happy with. You can see there's still, there's still a lot of thickness in the blade, so I still have a lot of uh, seal to move. Now that the blade's more the shape that I want, I'm gonna start focusing on getting the spike out of the hammer. So I put it on the edge and I, I'll hammer it flat Rotate it up, get more length out of it. And I'll just keep doing that, just like I did with the blade. And this this part goes pretty quick. It's a it's getting to where I want it. I want it a little bit thinner than that. But it's starting to take on the shape. Get a little bit thinner, get more of the shape towards the end of the spike that I want. But it's looking pretty good. I can start grinding pretty soon. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. You have to re straighten everything. But it's good to have a good hold on the whatever you're working on. Grind a little bit. I didn't have to grind a whole lot on this. And I can start getting the oil preheated. I'm gonna use this railroad spike. I like using railroad spikes because they're they're really thick, so you get a lot more heat. You can get the oil hotter than you want, so that when you actually quench, 
it'll be closer to the right temperature. You don't have to preheat that many times. So this got the temperature up to almost 300 degrees. By the time I did my three normalizing cycles with the Tomahawk, uh, it was perfect temperature, about 145 degrees. With normalizing, I'm just taking all the stress out of the steel from forging. And if the magnet doesn't stick, that's critical temperature. That's where I want it. This is after the third normalizing cycle, doing a slow quench. I'm heating up the blade and quenching the blade, and then I'm going to quench the spike, but I'm going to leave the middle. I'm not going to touch it at all. I'm not going to quench that. I want the blade and the spike hardened. All right, here's the spike. I want to make sure if I hit it or if I'm throwing it, it spikes hard so it won't, it won't get damaged. And if they are both hardened properly, the file should skate right over them. And you can hear the difference. That one's hard, that's hard, and then goes in. The different sound, so the, the center is a lot softer than the, the blade and the spike. That's what I want. Then I'm gonna temper the tomahawk. I'm gonna set it 400 degrees. And I'm gonna do this for two hours, and in between each hour, I'm gonna let it cool back to room temperature, and then I'll put it back in, so two hours total. I'm using this flap disc. This will clean it up really nice. I just like the finish that it gives. I cleaned up the tomahawk real nice, so I decided I'm gonna try it on my anvil. It's looking really dirty. I just wanted to make it look a little bit better and it, it did a really nice job. Doing some final grinding after heat treat. And I've got a piece of hickory. It's a lot longer than I need. I'm trying to get a feel for about how big I want it, or how long. I'm just gonna clean up the, the handle a little bit. I'm gonna make a spot that I can slide the, the tomahawk onto. I'm just gonna hammer it in. I want a really tight fit. So that when I put the wedge in, it'll just be extra tight. It wasn't moving around at all. Then I've got this piece of 1095 steel. I'm just gonna make my wedge. I'm just gonna grind it down so it's really thin and sharp. It'll bite right into the wood. And I cut it down to size and then hammered it in. And what's gonna happen as it goes in, it's gonna force the wood outwards. This should be really tight. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. There's a little piece sticking out the top. So I'm gonna make it all flush with the rest of it. Now I'm going to burn in, I wanted to have some stripes, it looked really plain. This made it look a lot better. And then I'm just going to use some steel wool, go over the whole thing. Right now it's ready to test. I'm going to be going up in the mountains to test it first. I'm gonna test it in my backyard in case I can't find a lot of wood. I had to try throwing it. A lot of fun. And I hung up a soda can, but I'm not a very good aim. I hit it a couple times trying to get to explode, but I can never quite hit it. 
So I'm up here in the mountains. One of the things I'd like to do differently is next time I make one, I'd like to have the tomahawk head a little bit wider. Give me more, I can design it a little bit differently. Give me more room to work with. I've been thinking about just making a, a tomahawk head and a wedge and then assembling it when I'm up backpacking. And that way it won't look like a crazy man walking through the mountains with a tomahawk. Most of the people I saw up here, they they didn't care, they thought it was cool. It just snowed earlier this morning. There's not a whole lot of wood. I'm gonna go see if I can find some. This looks like a good spot. I'm gonna see if I can find some wood. This is about the only piece I can find. Start by getting rid of some of these branches so I can test it on the thicker pieces. It's hard doing this without a place to really put the branch. But I chopped through it really well. Alright guys, that's my tomahawk forged out of a ball peen hammer. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week.